another coach have won that game? I've had people email me, tweet at me, message me, tell me any other coach would have won that game. Well, you can think from a strategy point, if you like, in that in those terms. But would another coach have retained Bo Nix for another season? Would another coach have gone out and brought in Jordan Birch, the defensive tackle, who was on the field uh, mucking up things for Washington on Saturday? Or, rec- or recruited Mateo Uyunglele, who was making plays? Would another coach have arrived at Husky Stadium undefeated, coaching a top 10 program? I think if you're going to... You know, it feels like to me, if you're going to criticize Dan Lanning for being Dan Lanning, let's give him credit for being Dan Lanning along the way. You've got to acknowledge the upside of what we saw on Saturday. While we're also kind of lamenting the lost opportunity, it was a huge lost opportunity by Oregon. No way around it. These two teams, I think Washington and Oregon, arguably the best two teams in the Pac-12, arguably can make a case for getting back to getting to Las Vegas, playing for the championship. They may play two times. They may play three times, for crying out loud, if they're really as good as some of us think they are. But while we're lamenting what Oregon lost on Saturday, let's consider that Dan Lanning's decision-making, 37-year-old head coach, could be due in part to the fact that he is on the young side, less experienced, only in his second season as a head coach. Great recruiter, guy who's assembling talent like crazy, uh, coaches and, and uh, recruits with a lot of enthusiasm, and simultaneously a lot of us want him to shut that off when it comes to fourth down inside the opponent's red zone, and we want him to uh, you know, uh, coach a game like he's uh, a more conservative, less emotional, less fired-up football coach, and that's not who he is. I saw him go onto the field on Saturday. Does he need to learn from it? Of course. We all should learn from mistakes. We should all learn from things that don't go our way. But I already think that Dan Lanning probably would look at what he did on Saturday and handle some things differently. I sat three feet from him in the post-game news conference. He already was talking about evaluating himself. I, I, I hesitate to say that he would do everything differently because I just don't think that's in his nature. Nor do I think he should be apologetic today about what Oregon did on the football field. The Ducks lost the football game. I think you can nitpick the execution on fourth downs. You can, you can question the play calling on third down. I think they should have handed the ball to Bucky Irving on at least one of those third down and goals. Uh, but I think in the end, we all have to recognize that this is kind of what Dan Lanning's going to do. It's who he's going to be. He's going to go for it. And in fact, when he sees Michael Penix Jr. in Washington on the other sideline, he's not going to be a guy that's inclined to lay up and kick field goals when he has an opportunity to put sevens on the board. Um, I, 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 you know, kick a field goal, punt. I mean, there's a correction that needs to happen, no doubt. Like, I would have liked to see him kick one of those field goals. I would have liked to see him at the end of the game tell his defense, hey, I got confidence you ought to punt it. But I truly think we would be having a different conversation if one of those fourth and goals turns into a seven. And I think we might be having a different conversation had he punted the ball in fourth and three at the end there from midfield. And Michael Penix Jr., who went... 53 yards in two plays. Like, tip your cap to Michael Penix Jr. in Washington. I think we'd be having a different conversation if Michael Penix had gone 75 yards in three plays. Uh, you know, look, I, I, I want Dan Lanning to learn from mistakes, learn from losses. I think good coaches always do. But I don't want Dan Lanning to stop being Dan Lanning. I don't want him to stop, uh, you know, believing in his players. I don't want him to stop telling his guys, his offense, hey, I know you can get a seven here. I'm not going to kick the field goal because I know, given enough opportunities, this percentage-wise is going to work out for us. On fourth and three, hey, I don't want to give the ball back to Michael Penix Jr. I don't want Dan Lanning to change that. I don't want him to stop recruiting. I don't want him to stop, you know, the vein bulging in his neck, telling his players before the game that they're about substance. I don't want that guy to stop being Dan Lanning. And that's my point today. Oregon's got to learn from the mistake. It's got to learn from the loss. It's got to consider whether it would do things differently from a strategy standpoint. But Oregon can't stop being Oregon, and Dan Lanning shouldn't stop being Dan Lanning.